Do you guys like Bunkus? If you do, you're going to want to stick around because today we're going to be looking at possibly one of the best performing Bunkas out there. This Fujiwara Maburoshi 180mm Bunka. Now, if you haven't already, please consider supporting the channel by hitting that like and subscribe button. We also have an IG knife shop where we sell some knives to help support the channel. And we also have a merch store where we sell some merch so you can further support this madness. Now, quick disclaimer, Tokushi Knives did send me this knife completely free of charge. However, they're not paying me for this video, nor am I affiliated with their company. So this way you guys know that my feedback and review is 100% honest and of my own. And as always, this is a first impression review, and we'll come back here in six months to see how this baby holds up. Now, if you're not familiar with Fujiwara, you're in for a treat. Because for some knife nerds out there, they believe that owning a Fujiwara is kind of a rite of passage for the Japanese knife enthusiast. Now, a little bit of background information on Fujiwara Teriyasu is that they're a fourth generation forge based out of Tokyo, Japan. The Fujiwara family actually started out as sword makers over 140 years ago. But after the war, and with the new restrictions in place on sword productions, the family had to turn to modern kitchen knives as a way to continue their business and as a way to preserve their art form and their traditions. Now with all that said, let's go ahead and jump straight into the specs. The length of this knife is 180 millimeters long from heel to tip. The blade height, right here at the heel, is 52 millimeters tall. And the spine thickness, also right here at the heel, is about 2.79 millimeters thick. The thickness right behind the edge is only 0.12 millimeters thick. This knife is constructed out of a Sanmai construction. It has a white number one or Shirogami number one core with a stainless steel clad. Now, speaking of stainless steel cladding, here is some fun history on the Fujiwara family. Now, this is a bit controversial in the knife world, so feel free to debunk and discuss down in the comments below. It is said that the Fujiwara family created the stainless steel cladding process or at the very least, they are the ones who perfected the stainless steel cladding process. Now, the Fujiwara family understood that although they preferred the performance of traditional Japanese high carbon steel, they also understood that there are some slight drawbacks to carbon steel knives being its maintenance. So by forge welding a stainless steel clad to the more harder, purer, and more reactive core steel, not only does it provide additional protection and support, it also provides the ease of maintenance as a stainless steel knife. Now, what makes Fujiwara knives a bit more unique is that they laminate all of their steels in-house with the exception of the Nishiji line, whereas most makers actually source out their Sanmai billets from steel companies such as Hitachi Steel. Now, this model of Shibanka is heat treated to a 64 to 65 Rockwell hardness. And typically when you see a Fujiwara knife, you will see a Western style handle. Fujiwara-san actually makes a limited amount of its knives with traditional wa handles. And typically from factory, it comes with a whole wood handle with a black horn ferrule. But this guy right here got some new pants over at the Tokushu Custom Knife Shop. And this handle is made out of a stabilized M burl wood handle with a marbled horn ferrule. Now this handle is made by Junitsu, and the artist behind Junitsu, his name is Andrea Miranda. He is a veteran Italian chef based out of France, and while he was training in Spain, he actually discovered Japanese knives and fell into the rabbit hole and developed this great love for Japanese knives. And with all that being said, he started making knife handles so he can share that love and his art and passion with the world with these beautiful handles. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the fit and finish. Now, before we get into the fit and finish, I do want to mention that Fujiwara knives are not for everybody. What I mean by this is that Fujiwara knives come with a more rustic finish. And for this price point, some people believe and want a more refined finish, which is totally okay. But for those of you guys who do appreciate a more rustic handmade finish, the Japanese people actually have a term for this. It is called Wabi Sabi. And I'm going to try to capture the term and explain it with as, as much ease as possible because it's actually a very deep meaning. Wabi Sabi in short means finding the beauty in imperfection or trying to continue the cycle of life by appreciating its most natural form. So for those of you guys who want to learn how to crown your own spine, or to round off your own choil and to just customize a knife to your own liking, you will probably really appreciate a Fujiwara knife. Now lastly, before we move on to the fit and finish, is that there is a very signature characteristic of Fujiwara knives that you probably already noticed, is this 
choyo notch right here. This choyo notch allows you to really lock your hand in for a pinch grip. And when you lock your hand in there, this knife is very secure in your hand and it just wouldn't move anywhere. It's a very, very cool signature feature for a Fujiwara knife. Now let's go ahead and check for blade straightness. First things first. Knife is nice and straight. Taking a look at the finish. The finish is very consistent. The grinding is very consistent. The hammer marks, the sushime mark, is very, very pretty. I like this a lot. Lamination line is very even all the way across. And the only thing so far that I've noticed is that there might be some core steel kind of poking out at the choyo area, which is a very easy fix. Just a little bit of sandpaper would knock that right off. And I'm not sure if this came with the choyo service from Tokushu Knives. Um, Zach and Tony, if you guys are watching the video, please comment below to let me know whether or not this came with the choyo and spine service that you guys offer. But from what I can see, the choyo and the spine is not very sharp at all and it's actually fairly comfortable in the hands and doesn't need much work, if at all. Next, let's move on to this handle. This handle is installed by none other than Zach Peters over at Tokushu Knives and he did a phenomenal job on this handle. The handle is installed very nice and tight. There are no gaps whatsoever on the tang hole. The blade is nice and straight on it. Handle is nice and straight, nice and centered. And one of the things that I do want to mention about Tokushu knives that really I feel like makes them stand apart from their competitors is their customer service. These guys know customer service and they will make sure to take care of you guys. So that's why I love working with Tokushu knives because these guys, they, they're doing it right. So I, I really love these guys. Now let's go back to the handle. Sorry. Um, the handle is made beautifully. The lines and the chamfering is very even, very straight. There are no gaps in the handle whatsoever. And there are no ridges that a lot of times when you feel between the ferrule and the handle, the wooden handle, sometimes you'll feel kind of like a little bit of a ridge that you'll catch and this is completely smooth. I don't feel anything at all. Now the only thing I will have to give feedback on on this handle, I would have to say this is a personal preference thing, is that these Junitsu handles are a little bit more on the thinner side and I personally prefer just a slightly thicker handle because it's just it's just something I prefer. But for those of you guys who do like a smaller handle or if you guys have smaller hands, these Junitsu handles are perfect for it. And the quality of these handles are super, super nice. Now let's go ahead and move on to the grind and profile. This knife actually came with the edge finishing service or the sharpening service from Tokushi Knives, sharpened none other by their sharpener, Zach Peters. So I am actually really excited to test this edge out. Now that being said, the profile of this knife is more of a traditional Japanese profile, meaning it has less of a belly in comparison to a Western style knife. It has a flatter profile, which allows for a better slice and chop cut, or even a push cut. Um, the grind of the knife is nice and gradual. I'll grab a different angle so you guys can see this choyo shot. But very nice and gradual. And I am very, very excited to test this knife out. So without further ado, let's grab some stuff and let's get to cutting. Cut test, take one. Okay, as always, we're going to start with a standing paper cut test. As you guys can see, nothing holding this guy up or anything like that. 
and man, Zach, that is a very clean edge. I mean, that just blew right through it. It just feels like the paper is not even there. I mean, holy smokes, guys. Wow. As you guys can see, the push test is passing with flying colors. Just going to try to roll this edge for it to catch. And it cuts right through. No issue whatsoever. Next, as you guys know, one of my favorite things to start cutting with is a carrot. But today, we're actually going to start with the good old tomato test. And with the push cut test, you guys can probably predict that this guy, we're going to start with the good old tomato test. No issue whatsoever. Just effortless. Look at that. That is paper thin. So there is our tomato test. Next, our carrot test. The reason we have a carrot test is because the carrot is a fantastic way to test out the grind to see whether or not it is too thick or anything like that to make sure that it is not going to wedge through the food. So far, so good. And this pinch grip, this little notch, just locks that knife right into your hands and it feels amazing. Blowing right through this carrot with no issues, no wedging, very, very clean cuts. Man, that is banana. Really nice. And one thing I forgot to mention about the balance of this knife is usually for most Japanese knives, they tend to be a little bit more blade forward or, or the balance is a little bit more forward heavy because of the lighter Y handle and the heavier steel in the front. But this guy, the balance is literally right here at the notch for a Y handle. So that is actually pretty impressive. So I am liking this guy a lot. Okay, as you guys can see, this knife performed flawlessly. The 6465 Rockwell hardness just blows through the food. But as you guys know, with a 6465 Rockwell hardness knife, it is a harder knife. So please take extra precaution when using something like this. 
and I am very excited to see how this guy is going to hold up in the next couple of months. So I will come back here in six months to talk to you guys about it. And this wraps up our video for today on this Fujiwara Maburoshi 180 millimeters bunker. And I hope you guys do like the video. If you guys do like the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. It'll mean the world to me and help me support all this madness. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.